right, welcome, welcome. Good afternoon. All right, one more time. Good afternoon. Excellent, excellent. This is an exciting time for um, both Madison Park Development Corporation and BEST um, in regards to this space that we've been working very hard on. I figured that today I'd start out with a little small exercise that actually is a symbol of all of the effort been put in to this process. So if you can follow me really quickly, I just want everyone to take one quick breath, and then when you breathe out, just say, hmm. All right, one quick breath. Ready? One, two, three. <sighs> one more time. One quick breath. <sighs> now, that quick breath is actually for a couple of folks. My dear friend, first and foremost, Marie Downey, who this has been a very challenging process. I also want to recognize our asset manager at Madison Park Development Corporation, Brian Pilcher, who's in the back. Can we give him a big round of applause because he's worked very hard and tediously on this project. Um, I also want to recognize uh, our fierce leader, Jean Panado, who's in the front here. Please give her a round of applause. And a gentleman who really is in the back uh, of all of this and trying to make this happen, not only for this community, but for Local 26, which is Brian Lang. He's not able to be here, but can we give him a brief round of applause? So as I said, this day has been a long time coming and hasn't been easy. You know, so I want to welcome you to the grand opening of Dudley Square's Best Hospitality Training Center. It gives me great pleasure to be a part of this collaboration between the state, the city of Boston, and a local union connected to great wages because of their employers. As the chairman of the board for Best and the director of community action at Madison Park Development Corporation, I'm excited to see this partnership kick off and excited for our community. Best moving into Dudley Square is not just about training people for good jobs, but more importantly, a deliberate effort to open up hospi the hospitality industry to US-born minorities, primarily African Americans missing out on earning a livable wage and accessing great benefits. This center complements the great work other agencies like CareerLinks, the Urban League of Eastern Massachusetts is already doing for res residents in this community. We thank Governor Baker for the Urban Agenda Initiative, which, in, which is an, an investment that clearly says no community should be left behind when it comes to employment or opportunities. We also know Mayor Walsh and Chief Barrows of the City of Boston's Economic Development uh, uh, Department are focused on building economic centers to build bridges for low-income families to sustainable wages. This partnership and the space we stand in speaks volumes about our elected officials' commitment to Roxbury, and so we want to thank Tito Jackson as well, City Council Tito Jackson. Please give him a round of applause. I know we may have other elected officials in the space, and we want to recognize them as well. I must note also that Best Core is a recipient of the City of Boston's Neighborhood Jobs Trust Fund. So Trin Nguyen, thank you, and to all of our Best Program-related funders, we want to thank you as well. Give them a round of applause, please. <laughs> Lastly, we should know for a surety that this center is not just about training individuals for what most people would see as first-tier hospitality jobs, such as room attendants. I sat in this room less than a month ago with about 30 hotel uh, general managers from leading area hotels, which are in this room right now, and was impressed with one statement made by one of the major leaders in this industry. That statement was, working together is not just about employing minorities, but changing the faces of those who sit in, the room at the in this room at the highest level of hospitality management. During that meeting, most of this room was filled with men and women who do not look like individuals who live in this community right now. This statement confirmed for me, even before the doors of this center opens up, together we are truly, we are truly going to make a difference everyone in this community can be proud of. So to all of the leadership in the room and those who tirelessly work together to see this opportunity come to fruition, thank you. Give yourselves a round of applause. At this time, I'd like to hand it over to my dear friend that we've worked together for quite a while. You know, this is sort of a, a long time coming. I worked with Marie ever since 2008 to generate the first US-born uh, African-American minorities sort of pipelining into the industry when I was at the Urban League of Eastern Massachusetts. So I'm so excited for her and the staff. So please give a warm welcome to the president of BEST, 
Marie Downey. Thank you, Abigail, for your support and vision. And thanks to each of you for taking the time out of your busy schedules to celebrate with us. Best is thrilled to be expanding to Dudley Square, as are our, our employer partners and our labor partner, Local 26. There are many people and organizations to thank for assisting Best in its journey to get here. Is that okay? Can you hear me all right? Yeah. Too many to mention by name. We tried to remember you all in the program book, and if we overlooked anyone, please know we appreciate each effort that went into making this beautiful center a reality. A permanent plaque will be erected at the beginning of the year to recognize the support we received both financially and in kind. You know, two years ago, as Abigail said, we, we began to, uh, to talk about expanding here. Um, as a result of the hospitality growth and the demand for our job seeker services, Best had reached training capacity in our Chinatown location. Opening a second site here would create a pipeline in this neighborhood by connecting people interested in working in hospitality to quality jobs. And as is often the case with nonprofits, we have big ideas and limited resources. But then this project took on a life of its own and it became a labor of love. Under Jean Panato's leadership, uh, she recognized the impact that these services could have on residents in this neighborhood. And she was determined to make this vision happen. Successful in their efforts, they received an Urban Agenda grant to assist with the renovation costs. The building trade unions, who have a long-standing tradition of helping nonprofits and investing in communities, including Dudley Square, did their part to make this project successful. They took extra care and effort to identify the right contractor partners and training programs to successfully complete this project. And it didn't end there. A family foundation learning of our move contributed $50,000 to the technology needs of this center. Our neighbors up the street at the Hamel Art, Tribal Art Gallery welcomed us and donated some of the work we have on display. And other works of arts were donated from artists through the Art Connection. And then we have supporters like you hospitality employer partners, community partners, developers, food service providers, and others who understand the significant impact, that e the, the significant economic role that training plays in hospitality, tourism, and the gaming industry. The efforts of each of you who sit here today will have a great impact on those who come through our doors for years to come. The, sex, the success of this project, as you see, was truly a collective effort. Thank you all. Best is blessed that two men known for their leadership, their love for humanity, and for being committed champions of social justice will grace our space with their presence physically and spiritually. Most of you know both men, Mel King and the late Paul McDevitt, two bright lights and beacons of hope. We are honored to have Mel King with us today, and we are delighted that Dudley Square is the new home of the Mel King Empowerment Program. Mel and I had a recent conversation about the competencies and skills that are needed for people to be successful at work and in life. And in the adjacent room, will be called the Competence Room, and this picture of Mel will remind us of the power of love. Please join me, Mel. I know you're... Please welcome Mel.
Where are you going? You asked me to join you. <laughs> well, now you're going to say a few words or read a poem. Um, say a few words. <laughs> a few words. <laughs> um, well, I have to do this. Uh, first, I want to... <clears throat> bring up the name of uh, Dominic Pizzotto and the folks who were the real pushes for this program, mainly for treating people in this industry with the respect, the income that every human should have. And you need to know that history. You need to know the story of the struggles with the workers and the owners and the points at which there was a coming together which leads to where we are today. And so in memory of the union folks at Local 26, I really say thank you and I wish you would join me and saying thank you, because they played a big role in getting us where we are today. <clears throat> now, just a little personal story, um, and why I am so into and impressed with the approach that's taken with the program called Best to get folks into the income level and with the respect of their work that they deserve. Um, I started out selling newspapers and my route was from the Record American building down Summer Street. I walked up Harrison Avenue into South End and then Roxbury. Um, one day, as I was walking by, one of my customers, Joy Young, a Chinese restaurant, the owner came up and said, you're too big to be selling newspapers. I didn't know what he meant. He said, we have a job. We need somebody to carry the dishes from the dumb waiter to the dishwashers. And I said, well, let me think about it. Next day I says, okay, if you will allow me to do my homework in the interim. He said, fine. Anyhow, I took that job and when I saw that the dishwashers, and they were all much, much smaller than me, were having trouble, and I understood why he wanted me because they couldn't lift that many dishes to the sink. But one day I looked over and they were in the back of a dish pile that was taller than they were. And so I went over and followed my father's instructions, which said, if there's some people who need some assistance, you don't stand and watch, you help. So I went over, started washing dishes and doing stuff. The people in the restaurant, the, uh, the uh, kitchen were surprised and impressed and believe it or not after that i can get anything i wanted in that restaurant <laughs> etc and my mother used to say well, why are you bringing all this food home i said well they let me walk out the door without it so and i tell that story because um, my history starts with that even though before that working up at a camp i was Supposedly, I thought I was going to be a counselor, but I had to work in the kitchen and again wash, wash dishes. So I'm now um, graduated from high school on my way to uh, college. But the summer before, I was looking for a job. And guess what? I, somebody sent me over to the New York, New Haven, Hartford Railroad over there in South Boston. And I got a job as a what? As a dishwasher. 
and best job that one could have had at my age. We traveled on the train from Boston to Washington, spent overnight, came back, went to different places, and I really appreciated the kind of work that the people in the kitchen, the waiters, all had to do. Okay, I get up to the time I'm going to college. I got a football scholarship to go down to South Carolina and got there. When they told me as soon as we had our first practice that we all had to do some work that even though we had a scholarship, it meant that we had to do some work. Guess where they put me? <laughs> In the kitchen. I was on the dishwasher, etc. And it was very, very, very meaningful because I had a chance to um, have exchanges with the other folks who were from the South about their life, the issues that we were, we were dealing with. So I tell these because I've been there, I've done that, and because of that and that experience, I have this profound love and appreciation for people who do the kind of work that's going on in service, in hotels, hospitals, you name it, because we don't, and we're just beginning to get to see that they get the remuneration that they should deserve and that their work is as valuable to any kind of work that anybody does. So I say congratulations to Best and I'll close with a, one of my poems which I think spells out what uh, Best is about and what your presence here signifies. It's called the pursuit of possibilities. Pursuit of possibilities, imagining a life based on the power of love, where all the children are ours, and we hold their trust so we bring out the best in us. Free me? Who can free me? Me. I know I'm free. I know I'm free because I can dream a world where all can be free to be complete systems in a complete system, complete sharing in the commonwealth. Somewhere out there are others who want to live in a sharing community. Free is inside of me, part of my heredity. I can take my life where I want it to be. I can keep pushing like my ancestors did for me. I am a link in the chain of change, working for all to be free. When the moon is full, see that nice super moon the other night? It has its impact on me, like it does the water in the seas. As the tides reach their height, I keep my goals in sight, to live in a world where I can share my life. Free is inside of me, so I can imagine where to take my life. The beauty of the universe is instilled in me. I can be the change I want to see, be the person, the gift of creation instilled in me so I can live in harmony with my world community. Free is inside of me. I can share the greatness of the power of love in me, watching the rising sun, providing warmth and fulfillment for every one free is inside of we if we believe in the power of love the only renewable energy and it's infinite thank you Thank you, Mel. Okay, moving right along. <clears throat> Next up we have, <clears throat> again, uh, 
I, I, I don't know what to say about this lady. She's been great to the organization uh, of Madison Park Development Corporation. A lot of this wouldn't be possible without her direction, the direction she gives to all of us as staff um, around development and the needs of this community. Her heart's always in it, and this is another sort of testament to uh, her leadership. Next up, we have uh, our CEO, Jean Panato. Thank you, Abigail, and uh, congratulations to Best Corp, to Marie and all your staff. I know how hard everybody's worked at this, so it's terrific to be here at this grand, grand opening. Uh, welcome to historic Dudley Square. Uh, what a lot of people don't know about Dudley Square, don't remember about Dudley Square, is this was the second largest commercial shopping district in the city of Boston before the, the, the advent of malls. So the f number one was Downtown Crossing, and number two was Dudley Square with the Ferdinand Building and all the other stores and businesses that were here in Dudley Square. So we're, we're really thrilled to be part of that renaissance of this neighborhood and of the economic power that this neighborhood has. Um, Mattis Park owns this building as technically the, the landlord um, for Best Corporation, but with many of the organizations in our commercial buildings in Dudley Square, we're really about being a partner. Um, and so when they came to us and said, we had this vision and this idea for this space, um, we were thrilled to sort of roll up our sleeves and figure out how to make it work. Um, and there, and we, when we learned about their success in training uh, residents for jobs, their desire to really expand in Dudley Square and reach out to the African American community, uh, we thought we've got to figure out how to make this happen. So it's great to stand here today and see it completed. I also want to thank Mel King for all of his leadership in the city of Boston, promoting equity, fairness, and love. Um, I love that message, and I think um, we all ought to talk about love more often. I think that Mel's right about that. It's not a word that we use, but it really does engender, you know, what I think we all feel about uh, days like today. Um, so a key, the next speaker, I'm going to keep moving us along, is uh, a key reason why we're here today. So let me introduce him and tell you why. Uh, first, Jay Ash is our Secretary of Housing and Economic Development for the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. He was born and raised in Chelsea. Uh, he served as city manager of Chelsea uh, for 14 years prior to joining the Baker administration. Um, in Chelsea, he's really known for working with the local community organization, expanding housing and economic development in that city. Uh, he now oversees a set of strategies and, and agenda for the state on community development, job creation, business development, consumer affairs, and business regulation. In January of this year, we were thrilled to get a call from his staff learning that this was going to be the location of a big press announcement uh, relative to the Commonwealth's Urban Agenda Fund, uh, something that really they had just come up with, I think, a couple of months earlier. Uh, so it was the fastest moving state grant program I, I have ever seen. Um, and, um, and so he was here with uh, Lieutenant Governor Karen Polito, um, and we learned that we were getting a $225,000 grant which covered most of the cost of this build out. So without further ado, please welcome to the podium my friend Jay Ash. May, your timing is perfect. <laughs> and uh, Jean, uh, I've never been uh, more happy to uh, speak after you because had you not been speaking, I would have had to have followed uh, quite a performance by uh, Mel King. Mel, that was wonderful and inspirational. And, um, again, a testament to uh, why so many have uh, considered you uh, such an inspirational leader uh, over the many years of your uh, civic engagement. So uh, thank you for continuing to be the beacon of uh, hope and the reminder of love for all of us. So uh, Mel, you're absolutely terrific. Um, I'm happy to be here on behalf of uh, Governor Baker and Lieutenant Governor Polito uh, to see the results of uh, our investment. Um, I walked through the building, I confirmed the $225,000 has been spent here. <laughs> Auditor, you'd be happy about that, right? So, um, <laughs> but um, um, the, the, uh, the uh, urban agenda program that we put together that um, funded this terrific space uh, really was born out of conversations that the governor had uh, with members of this community during a campaign, uh, several campaigns uh, for governor. 
Um, he had already been thinking about how he wanted to come back um, into communities that haven't seen uh, the prosperity that we all wish for those communities and wanted to make a difference. And so uh, after getting elected, after appointing uh, me to uh, uh, lead housing and economic development, we got together and talked about how we can make a difference in places like Chelsea and places right, like Roxbury and pr places like Springfield. And uh, the urban agenda uh, was born. Um, that's just the old train that used to run yeah, across right. the tracks here. But don't worry about it. You're all set. <laughs> I thought it was the mayor whining about my speech. The length of my speech, so. Oh, <laughs> So uh, the uh, uh, many uh, many people that are, are familiar uh, names to you and familiar to this neighborhood um, uh, helped to work with us to create the urban agenda. And the urban agenda uh, was about something that we hold very near and dear to our hearts in the uh, Baker Polito administration. Um, you see, our economic development agenda is called Opportunities for All. And when we were thinking about naming our economic development agenda, uh, we wondered whether it was opportunity or opportunities. We had to struggle about is it singular or plural. I know growing up as a, as a poor kid in Chelsea that there wasn't just one opportunity that made a difference and got me on my uh, pipeline towards prosperity, but there were several opportunities along the way. And so we decided to call our economic development agenda Opportunities for All, and we've created a number of tools uh, that are available for communities uh, to help uh, really find prosperity for people uh, who need prosperity. Um, part of that is finding people jobs. Uh, there is, um, I have to admit, I'm going to admit something here. I was once a job snob. So I was a city manager at Chelsea and I was chasing after all the jobs that Mayor Menino and then uh, Mayor Walsh was chasing after. And, and um, I kind of turned my back on those jobs that were entry level jobs. There were jobs that um, didn't provide the, the, the best of wages, um, didn't have the greatest of titles, uh, but were places where people could get a start. And at some point along the process, I recognized that I was ignoring that piece of a person's prosperity pipeline and, and so um, started to embrace uh, the opportunities that people could have in places like uh, hospitality and places like retail and uh, was quickly reminded as I watched uh, one person uh, go through uh, one of the hotels in Chelsea starting out in housekeeping and working their way up to an assistant manager how important um, the jobs were in hospitality and how important the entry level jobs were to people. Uh, so as we fashioned the urban agenda we thought about uh, how we could come back to communities that uh, needed assistance and we could provide uh, resources so that uh, people on the, on the front lines could uh, train their uh, fellow residents and uh, together could um, start a, a great path towards prosperity. And we're really happy uh, to be part of that. Uh, Ron Walker, who's a partner of mine, uh, will be able to tell you this. I'll recognize Steve Crosby in the back of the room. Stephen and I, uh, he's the chairman of the Mass Gaming Commission, uh, have had many conversations about our support uh, for expanded uh, gaming here in Massachusetts and wanting to keep those jobs that were being exported out of Massachusetts here in Massachusetts. Uh, we've had discussions about all the jobs uh, that we can produce here in the Commonwealth and the good news is there are lots of jobs and there are more jobs coming. Uh, Mayor Walsh is doing a terrific job here in Boston. The governor is leading after around the, uh, around the state and um, in community after community and in industry after industry there are terrific jobs out there. And what has to happen for people to access them? They have to get their start somewhere. What you're doing here is helping to get people uh, started. Some may never rise above uh, where they uh, first get employed after they leave here, but others will find their way. And as they find their way, uh, they will continue to remember that uh, this was a very special place in their heart, and uh, they will love uh, the opportunity that they've had uh, to be part of the special program. So the governor and I are very uh, happy to be part of this. The lieutenant governor and Ron are very happy to be part of this. And uh, we have a partner in our workforce cabinet, Secretary uh, Jim Pizer, uh, who manages uh, the um, uh, education here in Massachusetts. And we all work together to try to, uh, to improve the outlook for jobs for people in the Commonwealth. Thank you for doing what you're doing here, Gene. Thank you, everyone, for doing what you're doing here. And uh, let's continue to make sure that we provide opportunities for all here in the Commonwealth. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, Secretary Walsh. You know, I mean, you know, BEST is fortunate that we are in the center of a labor management partnership that's provided quality jobs and hospitality for over 30 years. Oftentimes when you think about hospitality jobs, entry level, dishwasher and housekeepers, the wage that people receive are minimum wage, but 
our hotel partners begin uh, after three months people are making twenty dollars an hour with excellent health care benefits uh, where they pay forty eight dollars a month for a health care plan so there's no deductible no copay that puts a lot of money in people's pockets and it's not unusual to have a housekeeper that work at one of the hotels that have been there for 30 years. Um, I don't know if you're aware, but this is National Apprenticeship Week. And so I think it's very fitting that we're opening a center this week because best with the help of the city of Boston, Trin, Mayor Walsh, the governor's office, Department of Labor, our hotel employers, and Local 26 launched the first housekeeping apprenticeship program in the nation this year. I want to say that our employers and, and their labor partners have set high standards. So the new hotels and other hospitality providers coming into this region, you know, there's been a high standard set for, for what workers should be paid. These standards allow for healthy workers, healthy families, and healthy communities. Our next speaker is a longtime leader in the hotel industry. She's been an enthusiastic, enthusiastic contributor and supporter of the work Best does since becoming the general manager of the Sheridan Boston Hotel in 2012. Please welcome Angela Vento. Thank you, Marie. For those of you who are short here, we'll adjust a little bit. Um, it is great to be here, and certainly I want to just say congratulations on this terrific day. Um, as I look around the room, it just feels so inclusive here, and that is really a terrific thing. And I think back to just a year, it's been four years I've been here, and at that time, Katrina Hines, who's here today, I had a chance to, at Mel King, at your event, give her a key to inspire her to be more. And who in the world would have ever expected that she started to work at the Sheraton Boston and she's been with us and doing a tremendous job. So it's not only great to celebrate your opening, but to be with you and celebrate the success and the contributions you do and the inspiration for all of our teams. So it's really a great morning. So as Marie called me and asked me if I'd say something, there was a thought that came to mind, and Mel, you know, you've inspired that, and Abigail, you have as well, Marie. It's all about somebody that showed me the way. And so I started to think back about my childhood um, and really what was important, that mentors and advocates for each and every one of us are part of our life and, and what really sets the foundation. And I thought back to my childhood, and I, I always remember my mother. She loved hospitality and she enjoyed entertaining. And she always took me by her side when she was preparing the, the event, preparing the food, setting the atmosphere. And you know, I just look back to the little things that I even um, think of today. How many of you have been to a dinner party and nobody knows which side the bread and the butter and the drink are on, right? She told me the one, okay, Angela, B is for bread and D is for drink. And still use it to this day, such a simple thing from that end. So with that type, she taught me those fundamentals. But in addition to teaching me the fundamentals, she gave me self-confidence. And I believe that's what the best program of hospitality does, self-confidence. And that's what you have, Katrina. In addition to that, I think you help to inspire a winning attitude. My mother was my someone that showed me the way. Her energy, her critical feedback, and her inspiration enabled me to have a feeling of accomplishment and fulfillment. And I think that you're doing that for those that graduate from this program and come to work at our, for us in our hotels. Best Corp, you feel that role in our community and certainly in this Roxbury area. You serve this role for our future associates. You are their someone that shows them the way. It's an important role that you have that carries such values and a mission and again, I want to just say congratulations for today and thank you for all your huge contributions. Katrina, please join us up here. And OK, 
Okay, thank you for the introduction. So I look around this neighborhood and I see people who look like I did two years ago. I want them to know that today I am a best graduate and a proud, hardworking Sheraton housekeeper. For me, the best program, it changed my life. Before doing the best program, I was working in retail and grocery jobs that were, you know, dead end. There was no opportunity for growth. At that time, I was kind of a Debbie Downer. I wasn't a free spirit like a butterfly. I never thought I would be work I would be a housekeeper. But when I go to work now, it's like, oh yes, this is my job. You know, I'm proud. I feel proud. It makes me feel good, honestly. My job is it's good for your, your mind, your body, and your outlook on life. Um, the people who work there, they have been there for years, and they become like your family, and they really care. I couldn't have gotten this job without the best training program and their support. One of the things I've learned in the best class is about body safety and ergonomics. The job is very physical, but I've learned stretching and how to move safely on the job. And now as a part of our morning housekeeper meeting, we do stretching and I've been asked to lead it a couple of times. <laughs> in my best class, I've learned about working in a diverse environment. And now I'm working in a very wonderful, diverse hotel. My coworkers are Asians, they're Caucasians, Africans from all, apart, all around the world, and I learn a lot from them and I love it. Um, to do this job, you need to be ready to get on a path to greatness where you have to work, but you're gonna love what you're doing. It's less of a struggle, and from where I come from, it's hard to put a couple of pennies together, but this job changed my life. I get paid really well, since I have low seniority right now, I may not get full hours during the slow season, but the thing is, even then I'm making more than I would a full time at my old jobs. And that is significant to me. My whole family can see the difference in me. They can see the happiness. And if my daughter says she wants something for her birthday, I can actually plan it and make it happen. My immediate goal is to maintain my focus on this job and to be the best house, housekeeper I can be, improve my credit score, do a first time home buyers class, and save money. My five year goal is, is to buy a home using the local 26 first time home buyers loan. My daughter will be 10 years old this Friday. And as I think about my five year plan, I calculate how old she will be when I buy my house she will be 15 and we will be out of housing. For now, I'm showing her to make and save money, how to walk the walk, how to be a great, honest, hardworking, independent woman. This job is just the beginning. I feel like I have so much more to prove and my mind is made up, there's no going back. I'm only going forward and I want this for others who are working the, the dead end jobs and the message is to strive for more and keep working hard. Thank you. Really quickly before we go into uh, Katrina continues on, just want to recognize two of our elected officials that are in the building. Uh, Anissa Asabi George, please give her a great hand. And, and, and also my dear, 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 dear friend and sister Ayanna Presley, please give her a great hand. Over a year ago, I met Secretary Ronald Walker when he visited the best training center in Chinatown. I had just gotten a job offer from the Sheraton. And um, though I was super excited, I wasn't feeling secure yet. And he told me, gave these words of advice to work hard, strive, stay focused. Just getting a job was hard, but don't give up. You can't stop the fight. 
trying to make yourself a better person. There will be obstacles, but keep your eye on the bigger picture. And I often remember those words um, of hope and encouragement, and I'm proud to call you a friend and an inspiration. And now I want to invite Secretary Walker to say a few words. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, first of all, I want to just take another moment and recognize Katrina. If you have not been inside Best when they get the phone call um, that they received the job, you haven't really experienced the program. Um, as she said, yet she was extremely happy um, and excited, but at the same time, she was, this actually happened. Um, and so we're able to talk, take her aside, and I'm just so proud of you. Um, that you still have that infectious smile, that you're focused, your employer's here, you have your plan. So congratulations to you, your daughter, and your family. And we are friends, so let's continue this discussion. Let's give her a round of applause. I think, Jay, we've all been here to Best. Um, it was in July, it was in April, um, out to Best in Chinatown with the governor, and we're announcing our Workforce Competitive Training Fund grants which we leverage to work with organizations who are training um, individuals to get the skills they need to be successful um, on their jobs. Um, and frankly, BEST represents the best of the program, the demand-driven program that we're trying to implement inside the Baker administration. Um, today, our unemployment rate is 3.6 percent, um, best in 15 years, um, and that's just phenomenal. A new report comes out tomorrow. But within that report, we also look at the number of jobs that have been created, and I think we've created well over 100,000 jobs, but we also look at those who are unemployed. Um, so earlier on, the governor by executive order, uh, we worked together to have a task force around the chronically unemployed populations um, that despite the growth in the economy, um, in all sectors, by the way, of leisure, hospitality, business, IT, professional services, manufacturing, construction, there are still portions of our community who are not able to really take advantage of those opportunities. And they're African Americans, uh, Latinos, persons of color, um, they're, they're also veterans, uh, Gulf War II veterans coming back, uh, persons with disabilities, long-term unemployed, you know, and youth overall. So what we're trying to do, and Jay talked about it, the governor created a workforce skills cabinet because you can't create pipelines to jobs unless you have economic development, education, and workforce working together. So we created the workforce skills cabinet, and our primary role is to leverage our human and capital resources to make sure that we are supporting those organizations um, that do the work that best does um, to make sure people are getting the skills. Um, secondly, we always have to talk about a demand-driven model. Um, I think our workforce model has been supply-driven, really want to help everyone that comes through the door, and I think that's fantastic, and we need to continue to do that with all of our resources, but we need to make sure that we're training and providing skills to meet the demands of the business sector. Um, so the hospitality industry has made a commitment, you know, here in the city and here in the state, that they need individuals to fill their jobs up and down the management train. And so what we're trying to do is make sure we're aligning all of our resources to support organizations like BEST, whether they're apprentice models, et cetera, and collaborate to make sure whoever gets trained um, gets a job. There's nothing more frustrating than going through a training program in three to six months, but you're not crystal clear that there's an opportunity for you at the end of that training. And that's what we're trying to do um, economically and from a, a educational standpoint in the Baker administration by all of us working together um, to get that done. Um, the last piece I'll say is, is at best, and I saw you at another, another meeting the other day, but it's so refreshing um, to have organizations that are really holistically committed to providing the skills necessary for individuals like Katrina um, to be successful in their job. And for employers, as a former private sector person, it's extremely important that you know where you can get a pipeline of talented individuals. And that's what BEST does. And so I'm pleased to be here with my partner, Jay. I know on behalf of the governor, um, Lieutenant Governor, we're pleased to continue to support BEST. But the real story is Katrina, um, who told you real time what it's all about, that she was trying to be successful. She did not have the opportunities in front of her 
but through this collaboration of city, state, best, and individual, she has not only a job, but she has a pipeline, um, she has support, and Mel, she has love. So thank you very much, and congratulations. Sir. Next up, I uh, just want to welcome uh, Jamie McNeil from Unite Here, Local 26, speaking on the behalf of Local 26. Give him a round of applause. Please. It's a pleasure and an honor to be here today. Um, it's an honor to be sharing a podium with you, Katrina and, and, and Mel King. Um, I think it goes without saying, you've changed the course of history here in, in, in Boston. And, you can see your legacy today here in this room. Um, my name is Jamie McNeil. I'm the general agent for Local 26. Um, Brian Lang, our president, could not be here today. He's out on union business in Chicago. Um, but I have the honor also today of introducing uh, a leader who really understands that the economic development that we see uh, downtown in the, in the gleaming buildings and the high rises it really doesn't mean anything unless it creates a pathway of economic development into our neighborhoods. And when I say neighborhoods, I mean every neighborhood. And it's the housekeepers and the cooks and the painters and the doormen and the bellmen who are creating that, solution, that, that pathway, uh, that pathway of economic opportunity uh, to every neighborhood. And it's, and it's those folks along with the partners here today that are creating the solutions, the solutions to the opportunity gap, and the solutions to economic inequality, and the solutions like the one you see here today. So it is my uh, pleasure and my honor to introduce our great mayor, Martin J. Walsh. Thank you very much, Jamie, and uh, thank you and Brian and everyone at Local 26. Uh, for the great work that you do in our city every single day. To the members that are here today and, and board members of Local 26, thank you very much uh, for what you do every day as well in our city. Uh, Katrina, you stole the show today. Uh, I wasn't here for Mel King talking, but you probably trump Mel. Uh, you know, uh, and Mel's a dear friend, but I, I want to thank you for your story. Oh, yeah. Ooh, well, hey, maybe that's something, you know. Uh, but. <laughs> That's a good point. Uh, it's the first time I said that word in two week, a week and a half. Uh, but I want to uh, I want to thank you because your story is a lot of people's story. Uh, it's a lot of people's story, and 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 um, you know Ron Walker talked about Mel King and, and what he means for the city, and Jamie, and uh, certainly Mel King is a person who who uh, who laid down a lot of foundation for a lot of people. Um, and I want to thank you and thank Mel, um, Angela. I want to thank you because. Um, for years, I was I, I always got the bread and drink thing mixed up, but now I get a B for bread and D for drink, you know? Just like a pretty woman. You start from the outside the fog and you move your way in. So I want to thank you as well. And, uh, and to our counselors, I don't know if they're still here, but uh, Anissa Sabi George, who, who has done some incredible things in our city in a very short period of time, and Ayanna Presley, who's here with us to, as well today. Uh, I want to thank them for their support and all the other speakers here. Uh, thank you very much for what you do in our city every day. Uh, Local 26 is, is a strong and clear voice for the hospitality workers in our city. Um, they've started a citywide conversation about safe and healthy workplaces. And I think Katrina, Katrina talked a little bit about that, safe and healthy workplaces, along with, with the Sheraton, but all the other great hotels in our city. Um, they've equipped the Bostonians with the tools they need to earn a living wage. And the new training center now is going to allow even more people, more Bostonians, benefit from the incredible resources of this program and of the industry. Dudley Square has seen a lot of development and change in, the, in, in most recent years. Uh, and this facility is going to help residents secure the careers and good wages they need in their community. And as Katrina said, uh, you know, she was out there a couple years ago. Uh, and out there could be outside this room and out there could be in other neighborhoods in the city of Boston. And to have this facility here in this neighborhood means so much. Uh, I see Council Presley is nodding her head. I mean, we try to help people all day long, and sometimes it's difficult. But when we have an opportunity like Best 
uh, to be able to connect people to opportunities for job training. Uh, that's, that's such an important role. I ran the building trades for a couple of years and, and we had a pre-apprentice program and contractors would often say that you know, the pre-apprentice programs are vitally important as long as they're training the, the next, next generation of workers. Uh, and Trin Wynn is here, who I worked with on that project, but also in the Office of Workforce Development. So I truly want to thank um, the best in 26 for this today. Uh, the city is certainly happy to advance the goals of, of this and, and create new jobs. Uh, and we're also pr proud to support the Mel King Empowerment Program uh, and the CV Properties Job Seeker Training Program. And I think that, you know, when you, when you think about the Mel King Empowerment Program, um, Mel doesn't lend his name to much. Um, and when he does, the program has to work, and the program has to be something he believes in. And anyone who knows Mel King uh, can tell you what, what he has supported over the years uh, is always doing something for people. So the fact that this program has, Mel, has Mel's name attached to it, but also is doing some incredible things. Uh, this year we worked together to launch the country's first housekeeping apprentice program. The city is Boston's relationship with Local 26 and the Best Corp falls right in line with some of our top priorities. Uh, we're working to help women and people of color overcome obstacles and secure good jobs and good employment. We're working to ensure safety and health in work, good working conditions. And we're boosting our local economy by supporting working families. So this is a win-win-win all the way around. Local 26 and the Best Corp have, have helped push all these efforts ahead in their educational program. They teach English, computers, citizens preparation, and I'll say that again, citizens preparation because it's important for us to not forget and, and always be supportive of our immigrants. Um, they teach, they also help the skills, especially important for new Bostonians during the career and development. Um, part of this new facility is gonna be named in, 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 in the honor of uh, our late friend, Paul McDevitt. Uh, Paul was committed his whole life uh, to causes of helping and training people, giving people second chances. Um, you know, when you think about that as well, there's nothing more fitting. Uh, Suzanne's with us today. Uh, Suzanne's a founding board member of BEST. Um, you can see that this couple, um, they weren't doing things for their own personal gain. They were doing things for other people all the time. Uh, I miss Paul. Uh, his brother's here. Danny's here with me today and he gave me a bracelet the other day uh, that I'm proud to say I'm wearing today and I'm going to wear uh, with me um, because of, of the great things that we're doing. He has one on as well. So Suzanne, I want to thank you for supporting this organization throughout the years and I want to thank you for, for, for allowing um, this facility be, to be named in Paul's memory. I know that he would absolutely love it if he was sitting in the front row and the fact that he's smiling down on us today, he's absolutely loving it. I want to thank all the partners who made this possible. Um, I want to thank, especially thank all the hotel employers in the room today um, for providing people with good wages and good benefits in a growing industry. And, and we're going to continue to push in the city to have Boston growing uh, in hospitality and in tourism. Uh, I want to say, just the last thing I want to say is, you know, as mayor of the city of Boston or as the governor of the Commonwealth or as a city councilor, um, it's important for us, and we do this, and Jay talked about it when he was a city manager understanding that someday there's going to be a person that walks through the door right here in Dudley Square, go through this program, go through their career, and someday be a general manager of one of the hotels in our city. And that will happen. And uh, if we didn't have the people in this room and, and the, the industry in this room and Local 26 laying down that foundation, that might never happen for somebody in this neighborhood. So again, I want to thank you all for the opportunity to come here today. It's such an honor. Uh, this is one of the good days. Um, and, you know, you trumped me, so how's that? <laughs> Thank you, Mayor Walsh. Um, as the mayor mentioned, Su State Auditor Suzanne Bump was a founding board member of BEST, <laughs> and uh, we're forever grateful of that. And we actually have some flowers we'd like you to accept as a token of our appreciation. And, and please join us as we unveil Paul's picture. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. You know, we're humbled that Paul's spirit will grace this room and inspire our work. Paul's legacy prompts each of us to do a little more by offering a helping hand whenever needed.
Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Marie, and everybody who have uh, had a role in today. I want to recognize um, Mel King. You know, I started in government a long time ago, um, but Mel was there before me. <laughs> and, uh, and I remember him as he strode the halls of the State House uh, as, a, as a legislator, and I was a lonely intern. Uh, Mel was then a giant uh, uh, in, in the State House, and he remains a towering figure and leader of uh, the social justice movement here in Boston. Uh, and I uh, want to recognize you for that and uh, tell you how happy I am that this program is being named for you. We all know in our family or amongst our friends people that we consider people persons and they are cheerful and they are outgoing and they're fun to be around, uh, they're engaging and my husband Paul was that but with him it went deeper. He was a true humanitarian. Um, and. He really just loved people in a way that not all people persons do. I mean, I could be a people person, but I got to admit, I am not as, as embracing of everyone as Paul was capable of being uh, because he was able to be there not just during the good times. Um, he was available especially during the bad times, when you were lost, when you were stuck, when you were down, uh, when you were desperate. That's when Paul really came through for you. Now he'd be there in the good times, but as his brother Dan would tell you, in the good times when we're all gathered around the Christmas table, he's off in a corner on a call to someone trying to arrange a detox or a, or a bed. Uh, so he was there, but he always had another agenda, even in the good times. Um, and people knew that when they had alienated everybody else, Paul was always going to be there for him to, uh, for them to counsel <laughs> them, to cajole them, and to, uh, to lift them up. I, and Paul was someone who really wanted to help people achieve their dreams. It may not have been the big dreams of going to the moon or becoming the president, but they were the dreams that we hold deep in our core. The dream of regaining your self-respect, um, living sober reuniting with your family and gaining self-sufficiency. Paul had the biggest heart in the world for the Katrinas of the world. That was his special gift and uh, it is really so appropriate that then this room is being named for Paul because this is a program that is all about helping people achieve their, their dreams. So thank you so much uh, for this, uh, for this honor, for recognizing Paul uh, in this uh, in this way, um, I, on behalf of the family, I just just want to tell you how thrilled we are. <laughs>